Hey guys, Colleen from Soft Monkey Magazine. I am here today with William Control of William Control. Here I am. This is him. We're in the Nile Underground today, and it's gonna be hot, it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be dark and mysterious. It's gonna be fun. We like it dark and mysterious. Do you? Cool. So how's tour so far? Uh, just started a few days ago, so I mean, it's been hectic. Yeah, you guys were running like here, weren't you? Yeah, well that was that was our fault. We left Vegas. No. Oh. We had a certain amount of Vegas. time. Vegas. Vegas, though. It was the time change. We left on time. Oh, did you? Yeah, oh, yeah. Cause we forgot about it. There's an hour difference. And you're like, oh, shit. Oh, well. You're here now. Yeah. So, you were on tour with Black Veil Brides. And then you also, you did you did open for the used, right? Yep. Okay. Now, how was all of that? Did you have fun? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, both those bands are friends of ours. Yeah. We've been friends for a while, so it's always a good time going out with them. Black Veil Brides fans are super... Uh, Black Veil Brides fans are, are really uh, welcoming. Mm -hmm. They're intense, yeah, but they're really open-minded. Mm -hmm. you know, there's some bands in the tour with their fans that just stand there. Really? So you were in Aiden, mm -hmm. obviously. Now, what's the difference between touring with that kind of a band, like a, a like four or five guys, compared to touring with like you and your guitarist? It, it stinks less. Does it? It smells better. Quite literally. It's, Probably the thing. Yeah. Uh, it's easier, obviously, there's less people to manage. Mm -hmm. You don't have to deal with six drunken idiots at the end of the night as opposed to just a couple of them. <laughs> hey, <coughs> drunk idiots are fun idiots if you ask me. So you're coming out with The Necromancer, which is your album. Your pre-order gift was the, okay, how do you say that? Revelator? Revelator. The album is actually called The New Romancer. Good God, I am sorry. Okay, Neuromancer, but the book is Necromancer. No, the book is... Good God. <laughs> I would never name anything Necromancer. That's why I was so confused. I would never name anything Necromancer. I'm a little dyslexic, I'm sorry. I don't like to have sex with dead bodies. That's why I was confused. Or do I... Would I like to write about having sex with dead bodies? <laughs> oh, no, I'm pushing. I mean, whatever your fetish is, I'm... I'm supportive. Don't get me wrong. If you like to have fuck dead bodies, I'm not one to judge. But. Okay. <laughs> so. So the record is Neuromancer, <laughs> and the book is called Revelator. So Revelator. Yeah. Now you posted like a thing, like chapter one on your website or Tumblr, or whatever kind of mode you use. Yeah. Is that from the book? It is. Okay. So what can your fans like expect after that chapter? <clears throat> well, the the story is. William Control, I started this project five years ago, mm -hmm. and every album I've released has been a concept album. Right. It started off with this guy who's nihilistic, he's suicidal, he goes to London to have one last night of booze and sex and drugs before he kills himself. Okay. And he's, the character is such a fuck up that he manages to fuck that up. So the subsequent albums I've released since then have been a continuation of that story with him waking up and traveling back to America and trying to find whatever it was. So in, in writing the new album, I decided that I wanted to write a prelude. I wanted to give people the answers of how this character got to this place. How did he get to London? And so Revelator, the book, is about this character who is a you know, college graduate but sells drugs because he can't do anything else. And is it going to get murdered? And this chick comes out of nowhere and saves him. Mm -hmm. He cleans up for her, and they fall in love, and they have this relationship for a couple of years, and then they both die in a car crash. And he ends up with, uh, ends up in a place with St. Peter, St. Peter's daughter. She's not here, she's in hell. And then Lucifer shows up. And Lucifer, I rewrote the story of Lucifer, where instead of him getting expelled from heaven for being rebellious and thinking he was better than God, he was expelled from heaven for falling in love with the humans that God neglected and destroyed. Mm -hmm. And that pissed God off, so he banished Lucifer from heaven to hell. Mm -hmm. And in an ironic twist, made him the ringleader of the tormentors. 
So Lucifer shows up to give this character one last chance to find love, which is really what Lucifer wants, is he wants what William has, which is love. Mm -hmm. So he sends him back to Earth, and he's so fucked up about not being able to save any of his, his, his love interest that he ends up going to London. Suicidal. That's it? Yep. One of those was always difficult. Great stories, but it's, always difficult to read. It's grim. There's sex and violence and drugs. It's fun. It's exciting. No. Something fun. Okay. I'm, is that based off of kind of how you view yourself? I mean, I have a lot of the same qualities as one control, definitely. I mean, one controls is an extension of who I am. One of the versions in my head right. is running around, getting drunk, and fighting people. I mean, obviously, I'm I'm, I'm so I'm so mm -hmm. but I mean, I think that we all have these different versions of ourselves that could manifest themselves, or maybe they could. So I mean, I don't have. I definitely don't have all of his qualities. I wouldn't want all of his qualities. He's a fuck. He's a fuck up. And sad. Mm -hmm. Really sad. And I'm pretty happy. Good. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So we'll leave that one in. On to the next kind of thing. So, how do you think you've changed since your days with Aiden? I mean, how have I changed? Well, I'm 10 years older. Grown up. You know, I no longer want to sleep on someone's hardwood floor and eat top ramen. I'd like to shower every day. <laughs> I understand that one. You know, there was a time when we'd just get in the van and play shows and then get in the van without taking a shower and our show clothes and go to the next place. And I just can't do that anymore. You know, a lot of things have changed for me in my views about the world around me. I'm a much more jaded person because of the traveling that I've done. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> you know, and as a kid, I was an optimist. Forever the optimist. But the world is so great. Everything's, everybody's so awesome. And now it's much different. Now that I know that people are shit, most people are shit, you know? Mm -hmm. So, a lot of things have changed. Everything has changed, really. I'm a different person. That's what my gripe, really, with, with Aiden fans is, they want to keep you in that one era that they fell in love with. Right. You know? They want to. They want to keep 2005. When, when it's 2013, like, I, that person doesn't exist anymore. I'm a totally different man. Mm -hmm. I'm a man. I'm not a boy anymore. And I'm not angry. I'm not angry at the world. I give less fucks. About, I, I don't care about punk rock. Mm -hmm. you know? I don't give a shit. About a lot of things. There's only a few things I really care about. Okay. So that's that's actually one of the best answers I've had. Was there what was the defining moment in your life? There's been so many defining moments. Okay, the, maybe the one that kind of made you realize that you're an adult. <coughs> mm. I think as cliche as it sounds, it was a, it was a relationship that I was in prior to 2008, it was a nightmare of a relationship. So I, I, I was in a band that was selling a lot of records and we were playing the show and it was fucking amazing. We were flying around the world doing all this shit and I had this woman back home that was just giving me the beef every night. Mm -hmm. and, I really, and I walked the line for
love is an action. Love is something that you do. Or something that you say. Okay. So, why did you originally get into music? Um, I don't know. Why does anybody, why does a painter start painting? Why does a baker start painting? I don't know. It's just something that I love. It was, it was the first thing that I was ever passionate about. The very first thing. I mean, I, when I was a kid, I loved skateboarding. Right when the mix. But music was the very first thing that I felt a connection inside to. I never felt a connection to it. It was the bands that I saw on MTV. It was that feeling that I got. Wow, this is. I connected with this. It was so. Uh, a, a deeper level than anything I've ever felt in my life. Great. So the music was the first thing I was passionate about. Something that I. kind of just felt into. Oh. Yeah. I'm not a musician. I've never tried to. I don't know how to I'm an illiterate musician. I'm, it's like, it's like, imagine a writer, say Oscar Wilde, okay. and he can't read. And you know he can't read. You know he's illiterate. And he goes to you, here's my book. <laughs> you like toss him in the trash. Read it. That's exactly what I do with music. I don't know how to, I don't know how to write. I don't know how to read music. I don't know how to write it. This, it's just a feeling, you know. Oh, that sounds good. That'll work. I'm an illiterate musician. A pretty good illiterate musician, if you ask me. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so if you could tell, like, the young you anything from right now, what would you tell him? I would tell him to stop being a foolish idiot. Perhaps do some schooling on the side. Like schooling, maybe. like maybe get a degree in law. Kind of thing. Yeah. I tell them Criminal law, law or defense, right, defense, right, defense, defensive or prosecution? Probably prosecution. I think that defense lawyers, we need defense lawyers, yes. But I couldn't justify defending someone who knew he was guilty. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Who would you say your biggest musical influences today? Uh, today, probably, I would say Elvis Presley, Frank Sinatra. There's really only a few things that I listen to. And it's all old. Don't show it. Sam Cook. Old shit. Okay. So old guys? Old guys that are dead. Hey. Old dead dudes oh, and old dead riders. You gotta do it sometimes, you know? If you can't find it here, you gotta look back. Okay. <clears throat> wow. If you could work with any artist, artist being a big board in there, doesn't have to be a musician, be a painter, writer, anyone. Who would you work with? Oh, shit. I don't know. I usually don't like to meet the people that I really like. You don't want it to ruin the image that you have. If they were a dick, I would like it. If I ever met Morrissey, he would be a dick to me. I know he would. Because I'm not. I don't know why. I, mean, I just know that he would. And I would be crushed. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I would be crushed. Yeah. So I don't know. Well, if you had to work with like the image that you have set in your mind, like how they would act or would not act. Um, it would probably be Morrison. He's probably the greatest living artist. And how did you hear Morrissey? Like, what did you Like when you first listened to him? Oh fuck! I mean, I think I got into the Smiths when I got into punk rock, which is kind of a weird thing. But I had this friend that was kind of. I mean, in the nineties, it wasn't. He's definitely gay. And I know that now as an adult. But he kind of liked that intro. He yeah, loved Dave Bowie and the Five and Fans and the Smiths. And I kind of like Drogia. Family, family. Rock. 
So now, what's like the biggest thing you miss like, back home? Either like nostalgic, like when you were younger, or like when you go home and you're like, damn, I miss this. I don't really miss anything, mostly. I'm not really looking into the past. I mainly focus on the future. Cool. So, with that little tidbit of looking into the future, pictures will be up later. Thank you for doing the interview with us. Thank you very much. It was great talking to yeah, you. you. See you guys later. See you. <laughs>